Rahim, starting our lecture X-ray sessions. The first X-ray is Muhammad Nadar, 20, with the right side chest pain and shortness of breath. And this is his chest X-ray. He is not febrile, not ill before. He have no history of trauma, no history of flu, and this is his chest X-ray. What's wrong? There are two ways to starting X-ray, uh, X-ray, X-ray uh, reading. What they call it? Either you start in systematically, yes. or you start you go right away to the pathology. Systematically, the trachea is central. The heart is normal size. The diaphragm is a normal size. The diaphragm this. The upper zone is clear. Clavical, this is a clavical. This is the epic, sorry. Upper zone is clear, mid zone is clear, lower zone is clear. The pulmonary artery is there. There is nothing in behind the heart. There is no scoliosis. <coughs> there is a blue obliteration of the angle, cost of phrenic angle in the left side. And if you go look carefully, there is a line there. What they call this? This is the surface of the lung. Yes, the patient got pneumothorax, spontaneous pneumothorax. We have two types of pneumothorax, either spontaneous or what secondary. Secondary, we mean by secondary is the trauma, insult to the chest. I mean, stab wound causing pneumothorax. Or secondary to disease. Suppose the patient got TB, uh, got fibrosis and alveolitis, and he got uh, 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 pleural uh, uh, pneumothorax. This patient got a pneumothorax. This is the line of the pneumothorax, what they call the spontaneous. How we treat this patient? First of all, how we how how can we define the degree of this pneumothorax? شوف السبيس يعني بين الرم يعني ايش قاعد يصير؟ I mean 15% pneumothorax and less is a medical treatment. More than 15% usually need what? Need a tube. Especially if there is a secondary lesion in the lung. I mean say pneumonia, fibrosis, alveolitis and the, the patient is distressed. How we, how we define pneumothorax? I mean how we measure pneumothorax? We measure it in this way. This is the chest X-ray. And this is exactly this is our patient. This is a pneumothorax. And this is a pleural fusion. Pleural fusion. As you see now, this is a pleural fusion. And this is the pneumothorax. How can we define the percentage of pneumothorax in this patient. Yes. We draw a vertical a vertical line just like this and we divide the lung to to two parts uh, to three parts by horizontal line That's nearly three centimeter there. And this is one centimeter there. And uh, that's one, the third one is a half centimeter. Three plus one centimeter plus what? 0.5 percent. And actually, this is 2.60 year old male patient. He is complaining of shortness of breath, cough, expectoration, especially on winter, winter, winter time. And this is his chest X-ray. You see, 
first of all, the chest x-ray show in large what? Cardiomegaly. And that cardiomegaly is of right side enlargement. Not being just like this on the diaphragm line, which is typical of what? Left. Of left side enlargement. There is wide pulmonary artery. This pulmonary artery measure nearly Yes, it, it is measuring three centimeters. Right pulmonary artery. The right pulmonary artery. <coughs> if it is more than 1.5 centimeter and the left pulmonary artery. So, this x-ray to a young patient who had the previous history of epilepsy. Complaints for uh, acutely uh, for a few hours with the disturbed level of consciousness and fit. The patient was referred to our AR and uh, at that time uh, diagnosed as having uh, severe respiratory distress by doing x-ray. Yes. Therefore, the patient is young patient with epilepsy and she got a high fever High fever, yes. High fever, and this is her chest X-ray. Chest X-ray show an unhemogeneous opacity all over the lungs, both lungs. These lungs being insulted by acute illness. Most probably, this patient, when she got epilepsy, probably she get inhalation of her vomit, and therefore, this is we consider this this acute respiratory distress syndrome. Acute. This is a, a, a 26 year old female. She is a known case of scleroderma. Uh, presented with shortness of breath, uh, dry cough for the last one year. And this is her chest x-ray. You see chest x-ray in this patient, the heart is normal. There is some element of what? What the? Reticular nodular shadow. Reticular nodular shadow on both. Bilateral basal. Bilateral basal and mid, mid zone mainly. In the case of scleroderma. Therefore, the most probably bilateral. Most probably. Lung disease. Yes, lung this is most probably interstitial fibrosis in, in a connective tissue disease called scleroderma. Therefore, most probably this is a pulmonary fibrosis and a scleroderma. The patient got what? Cyanosis and the club. Yeah. Therefore, this is a fibrosis and alveolitis involving the lower part of the lung mainly. As we said before, connective tissue disease might be associated as a disease, disease process with pulmonary insultation, with pulmonary fibrosis nearly 25% to 50%. But sometime, Drugs. The drugs being given to those connective tissue disease, cytotoxic drug, etc., can cause what? Pulmonary fibrosis. And we can differentiate both of them by what? Blood eosinophil. Right? Yes. By blood eosinophil in the blood. And there is, when we did a bronchial wash, we found the eosinophil is high. Therefore, most probably this patient got what? Secondary. Uh, pulmonary fibers due to drug she had been on. This secondary, or they call it a drug induced pulmonary fibrosis, is of a good prognosis because if you stop treatment, the process might, might reverse. On the other side, this is one side pulmonary fibrosis, the other one is, is also a female presented with, sorry, this is a male presented with cough, dry cough, cyanosis, clubbing, and he got this chest x-ray. The heart size is what? Normal. But there is fibrosis all over what? The upper part. The upper upper half of, of, of this, this chest x-ray. 